Tom Downey here for the Cowboys Report by Chat Sports as we break down the latest news and rumors on the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm already trying to get ahead of what I've already seen a bunch of comments, etc., messages of trading for Stephon Diggs, Bills lose, etc. If you have questions about Stephon Diggs, if you see people who have questions about Stephon Diggs, then simply send them this video. I think I explained pretty much all of it. Most importantly, some of the contract misinformation that has been out there. It's complicated stuff. I get it. So help me out by sharing this video on social media. So Diggs, the Bills once again come short because Cowboys and Bills fans only know pain in January. Diggs didn't have a great impact on the game, uh, which once again will lead to Cowboys trade rumors, hopes, and ideas. Diggs and the Bills have had issues in the past. You know Trayvon wants to get his brother down to, uh, uh, to Dallas as well. It is possible. A, a trade is possible more than it was last year. But it's also unlikely to occur, but probably for not the reasons you might expect. Now, Diggs' numbers this year, I will say, they went in the wrong direction. That is something I think we need to consider and be aware of, given the fact that Stephon Diggs is now... 30 years old, and sometimes when you get to the wrong side of 30, people tend to fall apart. Uh, they, they, they can lose it a little bit quickly. Let's talk the money here. This is the biggest issue, but not from the Cowboys' perspective, actually. It's from the Bills. Stephon Diggs' cap hit this year is $27.85 million. It's huge. There's a $31 million dead cap charge, meaning if the Bills move on from Stephon Diggs, they owe him more this year than if they simply kept him. The pre-6-1 cap savings, they lose $3.24 million if they were to, say, trade him before the NFL draft. So that doesn't help them get better. In fact, it makes them get worse when they were a play away, maybe, from being in the AFC Championship game, which they've been a play away for several years now. Now, they could trade or cut him after June 1st to save $19 million. They eat a bunch of money in 2025. But that doesn't help them get better now. And remember, they're carrying that cap charge through June 1st. So the big issue here is Buffalo. It's actually relatively affordable for Dallas. It's less than what they gave Amari Cooper a few years ago. $19 million this year. It's pretty much fully guaranteed. 18.5 in 2025. 19.6, $18 million. You're paying him a little bit less than four years, $80 million. You can restructure the 2024 cap it, bring that... Uh, figure down, add some dead money off in the future, but you're not paying that much. You can cut him in a few years if it all falls apart. The contract is not an issue in Dallas. It, it, it is totally workable, totally feasible, especially if you were to move on from, say, my gap, which I think you would do if you were to hypothetically get Stephon Diggs you would cut more likely uh, than trade Michael Gallup, and you got Lamb and Cooks and Diggs and Tolbert, etc. The big issue here is Stephon Diggs clearly wants to be a one. He clearly views himself as a wide receiver one. He's got the, the diva tendencies that most receivers have because that's how they're wired as playmakers. How would he like being a two to CeeDee Lamb? How, does he want to settle for maybe getting to 900 yards if, around that figure? I'm not so sure. I'll have more on this here in a minute, but do you want to get Stephon Diggs to Dallas? Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment of this video, so if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. I also know this part too. Eventually, Stephon Diggs will cause issues. That's just who he is. And there's, there's the, uh, the, the balancing of how much do you put up with versus how much play and production you end up getting. He and the Bills had issues this offseason. They tried to play it off, but like he just kind of left at one point, you know, at camp and was like, ah, oh, mad. Like he was, he was upset all offseason. He had issues with Josh Allen at times. Like, you know, Allen's really good. Like he's eventually going to cause issues. It's a matter of, is it, would it be this year? Would it be next year? Two years, three years? Is the risk re reward? worth it is he gonna be okay being a wide receiver too is he gonna demand more money if you were to trade for him all things you would have to work your way out that are actually bigger issues than just the contract and how do you pay for it actually not that hard also there's this stefan diggs uh is not 
did not play that great down the stretch. Now, schematic an issue here too. When they fired their OC, when the Bills moved on from Ken Dorsey and made the move to Joe Brady, Diggs' numbers cratered. He had 388 yards in the team's final nine games. That was it, including postseason. By the way, so to get to 19 games. Not that far ahead of Michael Gallup's you know, play. Really not. And that doesn't make any sense. So was it just the scheme? You know, he had the bad fumble and, and the drop. He, I mean, he, he, he did not play well against Chiefs either. So my issue is not money related. I, I don't know if it's a great fit in Dallas. And if you're going to go all in fine, I, I think there are very valid concerns about who Diggs is at this stage in his career and how he'd fit as a receiver too behind C.D. Lamb. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to six player stat projections, more than, less than, on those stats, and hopefully, and then watch those winnings roll on in. You can also mix and match with NFL, NBA, or just do NBA picks as well. Here's my conference championship game prize picks. Worked on Packers, Niners, didn't work uh, in the Bills matchups. Uh, Gus Edwards, more than rushing yards, taking the Goblin Basically a freebie. Isaiah Pacheco, half a receiving yard. Sam Laporta, more than receiving yards. Brock Purdy, more than passing yards as well. You can go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use promo code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. All right, let's talk Dan Quinn, his future. He's got at least three in-person interviews lined up for open head coaching jobs after Quinn's defense down the stretch, as we've discussed, kind of cratered. Uh, went from being a legitimate top five, top 10 defense to being a fringe bottom five defense over down the stretch, not including postseason. It was, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, the report has been the Cowboys expect Quinn back if he does not get a head coaching job with there being a good chance of oh, that. He's got three in-person interviews lined up here. Tennessee on Wednesday. I'd be a bit surprised if Tennessee went that route because that's just – you fire if able to go with a defensive mind. It's not as good. It'd be weird. Seattle on Thursday. That, of course, is certainly one to monitor here uh, for that job, given the ties to the organization. The Commanders also give him a second interview. Uh, I don't know which route Adam Peters is going to go, kind of an unknown there. So we'll monitor. What do you want to do with Dan Quinn? K for you want to keep him. L for you want to let him leave? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments. Now, Seattle's known second interviews, Raheem Morris, by the way, I think even as you're ever, who's an unknown, but if you're going, you know, retread head coach hire, I'm going Raheem Morris every day over Dan Quinn. I think it's just a better coach right now, and I think more deserving of a head coaching gig, too. Uh, Patrick Graham getting a second interview. Mike Kafka is an interesting name there. I think Seattle's going to add a lot more names to this list, by the way. Tennessee. Not that much known as of this stage. Uh, Bobby Slug, I think, is going to get a second interview, too, by the way. He's got ties to that regime, and Rand Carthon is the GM in, 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 uh, with the Titans. Dan Quinn, Thomas Brown, Brian Callahan. We'll know more as the days and weeks go on. Everything kind of got pushed back a bit with the way the NFL changed their interview rules. We'll see if Dan Quinn leaves. If he does leave, we'll do a breaking news video, and we will do Dan Quinn replacements for you here on the channel. Hit that sub button. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Finally, some free agency talk here for Dallas. Bleacher Report puts together free agent big board. Ten players. I'm not going to go into all of them because we'll do our own free agent targets list. That's probably going to bring it. It's going to be better, frankly. Uh, their big two pushes they had was adding a star defensive tackle. It'd be great. The Cowboys have not spent big in free agency in a very long time. Last big move was Brandon Carr a very long time ago, and they have limited cap space, oftentimes by choice. Now, the two names they mention, Christian Wilkins of the Miami Dolphins and Chris Jones of the Chiefs. And make no mistake, I love the idea of it. You're adding the thing that I've said you've lacked for a long time back when you had passable linebacker play. You didn't have that this year, really. An impact interior presence along the defensive line. It'd be great. It would also drastically break the Cowboys' M.O. of not spending big in free agency, of throwing money around to players who they did not draft. I love it. 
but it would be a, a break in history from what Dallas has done. The Jerry wants to make a splash stuff hasn't existed in a long time. In large part, he's passed off power to Stephen Jones these days. So will the Cowboys be aggressive in free agency? A for yes, they will. B for no, they will not. Get your predictions in for me in the comments. Now, the highest paid interior defensive lineman of this list, I would assume both Wilkins and Jones, in Wilkins' case if not tagged, would be along that left side. They're going to be in the 22, 23, maybe more than that million dollar per year range because they, pr they produce at that level. Christian Wilkins had 98 tackles this year, only 16 and, and 16 TFLs. The numbers dropped to 6.5 and 10, had nine sacks to go along with it. He's a, a game wrecker on the interior. Didn't have a great first year, as many defensive tackles do. Got better and better and better as the years went on. He's actually had five years, by the way. Chris Jones consistently makes plays for, for the Chiefs. Now, he's, he's older. I actually think he might not be as expensive uh, as, as Wilkins because of the age factor and how teams operate in free agency. But I still would lean until, until they prove me wrong. I would still lean towards this team not throwing around big money in free agency.